histogram is the representation of continuous data continuous data is a data that cannot be counted it needs to be measured so in order to understand histogram we need to understand the concept of data and continuous data discrete data is any data that can be counted for example the number of people in a room it can be counted so it is discrete data discrete data is countable data it is countable on the other hand when we talk about continuous data it is something that cannot be counted for example the volume of water the height of a person all of these things cannot be counted and they need to be measured so this is uncountable or measurable when we talk about histogram we are actually talking about the representation as a picture for continuous data now what does a continuous data look like when you have a table like this and suppose we want to find out the time taken for someone to complete a task now different people take different type of amount of time for that reason we need to say how much time did you take maybe the person took from one minute to five minute to complete the task and they are suppose ten people number of people is the frequency 10 people who completed the task between 1 to 5 minute then between 5 to 10 minute suppose there are 2 people who completed the task between 10 to 15 minute there are 3 people who completed the task and between 15 to 20 minute there are about 5 people who completed the task so this data is continuous it is flowing there is no gap in the data and it is continuous data time is continuous it cannot be counted it needs to be measured some common examples of continuous data are area volume distance time money height weight so now here we have a data which is grouped together this grouped data is called a class so class so it begins at 1 and ends at 5 this border or boundary of the class is called the class limit or the class boundary so this one that we have here this is the lower boundary and this is the upper boundary or the lower limit or the upper limit so we have the concept of class boundary so class boundary is the beginning and the ending value of the class this is also known as the class limit so this is the lower boundary and this is the upper class boundary when you want to find how wide the class is that is called the class width so the class width is represented by class width is represented by how wide the class is so class width is upper boundary upper boundary minus lower boundary so whenever you want to find the class width you want to find the upper boundary minus the lower boundary so the class width for this is going to be 5 minus 1 4 this is going to be 10 minus 5 this is going to be 15 minus 10 and this is going to be 20 minus 5 so this is the class width whenever we are talking about continuous data it is extremely important that the data is continuous otherwise there is going to be an error for example when we have data that has a gap 
instead of this if the data was given in this format where we have 1 to 5 then 6 to 10 then 11 to 15 then 16 to 20 in this case although time is continuous but the data that we have has a gap in between that means there is a gap here and there is a gap here there is a gap here now this is a problem because continuous data is not supposed to have any gap it is supposed to move on continuously so for this particular reason there is going to be a breakdown in the class boundary so the class boundary now is instead of being 1 to 5 1 to 5 the class boundary is going to be here and here because we have to do some sort of a continuity correction the continuity correction refers to when you have continuous data but there is gap in between you have to fill this up you have to fill this up and that thing is called continuity correction so this is going to be 0.5 this is going to be 0.5 this is going to be 0.5 that's how you do the continuity correction to fill up the gap like how you f uh, fill up bricks with cement for that reason this is going to be 0.5 and this is going to be 5.5 so the class boundaries are now going to be this one is going to be 0.5 then this one is going to be 5.5 then for this one is going to be 10.5 for this one is going to be 15.5 and for this one it's going to be 20.5 however since there is no gap here no gap so we do not have to do the continuity correction and the boundaries of the classes are going to be this is 1 this is 5 then we have 10 then we have 15 and then we have 20 so that's why it's extremely important to pay attention whether the data has gap or no gap if there is no gap then it is following the concept of continuous data where the data is measurable it is just flowing smoothly but if it has gap then we have to do a continuity correction to fill up the blanks the empty spaces between and we do that by adding 0.5 now if you think about this for this one the continuity correction is going to be plus 0.5 for this one the continuity correction is going to be minus 0.5 but they end up at the same space so this is going to be 5.5 and this is going to be 6 minus 0.5 also 5.5 so you don't have to bother about the class boundary just take the next one the next one the next one and the next one only the first class boundary has to be subtracted everything else you just add 0.5 so you need to remember whether the class boundary has gaps in the data or no gaps in the data based on that you do the class boundaries since the class boundary and the class width is connected so for this the class width is going to be not 5 minus 1 but 5.5 minus 0.5 10.5 minus 5.5 15.5 minus 10.5 20.5 minus 14.5 for that thing you have to use the continuity correction but there is a shortcut for doing this you can just do since there is a 0.5 here and a 0.5 here so whenever we have a gap we can just write 5 minus 1 4 plus 1 so this is 5 we can do 10 minus 6 is 4 plus 1 5 you can do 15 minus 11 is 4 plus 1 5 you can do 20 minus 15 is 4 or 5 plus 1 20 minus 16 is 4 plus 1 5 remember we are getting this 5 by subtracting this and this when we have no gap but here we are getting the class width by subtracting and then adding 1 which means just 0.5 here and 0.5 here so the concept that needs to be remembered is the concept of continuous data and the concept of continuity correction if there is a gap in the continuity so the terms are class boundary which depends 
whether it has no gap that is the natural thing or there is a gap if there is a gap we have to do continuity correction if there is no gap we don't have to do any continuity correction the next one is class width meaning how wide the class is so the class width is the upper class boundary subtract the lower class boundary and this is going to give the class width when we have no gap that means if you have a class from A to B you just do B minus A let me write it clearly when you have suppose 1 to 5 you just do 5 minus 1 which is 4 but when you have gap you do upper boundary is 5.5 .5 now because of the continuity correction and lower boundary is 0.5 which is going to be 4 as well which is actually this is going to be 5 so this can also be done in another technique just 5 minus 1 plus 1 which is going to be 5 so whenever you have a gap you can either do it by the 0 0.5 0 0.5 continuity correction method or you can just subtract and add 1 now in order to draw a histogram you need to know the concept of class boundary because histogram is the representation is the representation of grouped data so it is the representation of grouped data so when should a histogram be used histogram should be used for grouped data that is continuous data so it represents continuous data or group data and it is used for if the data is continuous a histogram looks like a lot of rectangles on the x-axis you have the class boundaries and you label this as same as the data because the class boundary is nothing but the data and the y-axis of the histogram is not going to be the frequency but the frequency density now this is the special rule of histogram the height of the histogram is not the frequency but the frequency density so the class boundary suppose this is for this histogram which has no gap so 1 5 10 this is the class boundary so if you have this so 1 5 10 15 20 so 1 5 10 15 20 of course you have to check the units I'm not doing this I'm just doing it roughly to give an idea so this is the class boundary the class boundary is the same as the data the class data so here the class data is time in minutes so the x-axis should be time in minutes now the y-axis or the height of the histogram since the histogram looks like buildings so it will look like buildings so the frequency is 10 2 3 5 but remember the frequency does not give us exact data it just tells us uh, around 10 people take 1 to 5 minute but we do not know how many people take how much time just a rough idea they take one to five minute ten people so we cannot be accurate about this it's a rough idea so the height of the histogram is not the frequency but rather the frequency density now the concept is the same concept as a special rule this rule is very very important the rule states that the area of all the rectangles that you can have suppose you have this rectangle this rectangle this rectangle this rectangle area of all the rectangle length into breadth length into breadth length into breadth is proportional to the frequency so if the area is proportional to the frequency that means 
area equals to k into frequency now if k equals to 1 is assumed we can just say area is equals to frequency that means if you want to find the area of under the histogram that would give you the frequency so if the area is the frequency then the height is the frequency density that means area means length into breadth for a rectangle then frequency is this is class width times this is frequency density that means frequency density equals to frequency divided by class width now this formula is very very important if you want to draw a histogram you need to know the formula for frequency frequency density so if you know the frequency and if you know the class width we can easily find the frequency density and that would be the height of the histograms so now let's try to calculate the frequency density of the grouped data that has been given so this is 10 the frequency so the frequency density is going to be 10 divided by class width which is 4 so 10 divided by 4 is going to be two point five so this is frequency density is two point five now the frequency is two divided by five is going to be point four the frequency is three divided by five three divided by five is going to be point six the frequency is five divided by five is going to be one so this is the frequency density of the height of the building so two point five point four point six one so this one is going to be so if I label this point one point two point three point four suppose this is one and suppose this is two so this is going to be two point four so let me clear this a bit the height for this one is two point five so this is going to be 2.5 the height for this is 0.4 then 0.6 so this is 0.4 this is somewhere around here and this is 0.6 somewhere around here and this is 1 so 1 is going to be here so this is the histogram so for drawing the histogram the first thing that you need to know is the class boundary and the class boundary depends on the gap or whether it has no gap and then we need to know the frequency density the frequency density is the height of the data and it is frequency divided by class width taking the assumption that area is exactly equal to the frequency so the underlying principle of a histogram is area is equals to frequency this is the rule that we need to remember that is the relationship between area and frequency so whenever they are telling you to find the frequency all you have to do is find the area under the histogram so when we talk about histogram we need the class boundary on the x-axis on the x-axis we need to remember that if there is no gap so the data is continuous there is no correction needed with 0.5 but if there is a gap we need to do continuous correction continuity correction then we need to know how to find the class width the class width can be found using the upper class boundary subtract the lower class boundary then we know the concept that area under the histogram is equals to the frequency of the grouped data of course assuming that k equals to 1 this is the underlying principle of a histogram so from here we can find that the frequency density equals to frequency divided by class width it is extremely important to remember in a histogram if these are rectangles then the height of the histogram is the frequency density and this label data is the class boundaries so whenever you draw the histogram you need to remember the height of the histogram is the frequency density and frequency density is found with this formula frequency divided by class width